celebrating the spirit of more than 30 schools across northern Clackamas County. This is NCSD TV. And as you can see, we are officially on the clock for another exciting edition of NCSD News, where we are counting down some of the most inspiring stories sure to score points with North Clackamas students, staff, and families. And today we have three features from the bleachers, including why many students during lunch at Rowell Middle School would rather dribble than nibble, and how a Llewellyn bus driver's love for her kids is on full display thanks to a little crochet. Along with the always coming through, never blue, always looking through that camera view, Brian McGrew, I'm Curtis Long. And let's start with some Rex Putnam students who get a little extra support while they're out on the court. Today, that court is at Cleveland High School in Southeast Portland, where the Putnam Kingsmen are the visitors on the scoreboard. And while the names on the uniforms of these two teams may say Putnam or Cleveland, the name of the game is inclusion. It's got all the dribbling, all the shooting, and all the cheering of a high school basketball game. But this contest is a little different. Welcome to Unified Basketball, the game that brings student athletes together with and without intellectual disabilities. This is the third game of the season and the first away game for Rex Putnam's Unified team. And as we learned today and at last week's practice, the score on the scoreboard isn't nearly as important as encouragement, opportunity, and inclusion for these passionate Putnam players. I did Unified Basketball my junior year and then I enjoyed it a lot so I decided to play again my senior year. What did you enjoy so much about it? Uh, sports have always been like a really big part of my life and I just loved the opportunity to uh, play sports with people who don't usually get to play sports and also just environment here it's like the most welcoming and supportive sports team you'll ever be on because everyone's just like constantly cheering everyone on to do their best and I, I just it's a fun time. Everyone gets to experience what it feels like to be on a team and to contribute to a team and that everyone has fun. You're, you're tall. Yeah. Are you good at getting rebounds? Yes. How does it make you feel when you make a basket? It makes me happy. Tell me what you love about playing basketball the most. It helps me to grow. Yeah. This is my first year of basketball. I'm very excited. Pass the ball and then make a more basket. You excited for your game coming up? Yeah. My favorite part is cheering for Brad. Cheering for people? Yep. Well, back in the gym where we've reached the end of the first quarter and the Kingsmen are trailing the Warriors by a score of 10 to 7. As we mentioned earlier, this is the first game away for the Putnam squad, which means they all piled on a school bus to get here. Now, riding a school bus is nothing new for thousands of NCSD students, and for some, visiting with the school bus driver each morning and afternoon is a favorite part of the day. Nowhere is that more apparent than for the 30-plus kids who ride Tanya Wilson's bus each morning to Seth Llewellyn Elementary School. Wilson enjoys the lovable leopard she greets each morning so much that she recently presented each of them with a handmade gift, a special present she spent more than four weeks making on her own time. The kids were certainly excited to receive Tanya's personalized gift made from the heart that they can all wear on their heads. Why did you choose to make all of the children on your bus their own special hat? I like the connection with my children, and I, I just don't want to be a boring bus driver. I heard that you were making them in the break room during your layover time. How long did it take you to make all these hats? About three to four weeks is how long it took me. Um, Any time I had that I wasn't driving, I was working on my hats on any of my free time. Um, free time on the bus, I would take them on my routes with me. And while waiting for kids, students to load, I would work on the hats. These are custom hats too. The kids were saying you even asked their favorite colors. I did. The week before Christmas break, I asked for two of their favorite colors so I can get an idea of what I could do. And I put their two favorite colors together. And how many kids do you typically have on a bus route? Um, my route is routed at 70, and I believe I did about 55 hats. So you made 55 hats, and it took you since September? Three to four weeks. Three to four weeks you've been working on those, and the kids all got them today, and yes. we saw nothing but smiles as they came off the bus. How's that make you feel to it see the kids so excited? Wonderful. I love it. I love each and every one of my kiddos. So what do you like best about being a bus driver? Being able to talk to the students and find out how their day is gone, and or their weekend. Um, if I have a student that's feeling down or whatnot, I'll try to find out what's going on and 
try to make that day a better day for them. And we interviewed one of the kids there that said that they love their bus driver. How's that make you feel? It makes me feel amazing. <laughs> I think it's a really good privilege because none of our bus drivers in my whole entire lifetime never gave us hats, never gave us gifts or anything. She's like the only person that gave us gifts and I'm really thankful for that. And I love her so much for being our bus driver. I didn't even know she was actually gonna make them until like a long time ago, like about like a month ago when she said that she's gonna make hats for us. Today's the first day you got it, right? So yeah. it's the first time you've worn it. What, is it comfortable? What do you think? It's very comfortable and it fits my head. I can even go like this. You could. I could see through it. You could wear it over <laughs> your head. Those hard felt hats sure look comfortable, but back here at Putnam's Unified Basketball Game, the Kingsmen and the Warriors are in a close one as the halftime clock continues to eat away. Well, speaking of eating, that's one thing Rao Middle School students did as fast as possible during a recent Friday lunch period. Not because they were so hungry, but because they couldn't wait to get to the gym to take on their teachers in the school's traditional three-on-three -three versus students basketball tournament. And as we quickly found out, Rao staff members had no trouble chewing up the student competition. That's Rao Media Arts teacher Lucas Dix, who like many other staff members, worked up quite a sweat posting up any students who dare to challenge the Shamrock staff. Rao staff members take time out of their lunch periods and take on the students in basketball battles every few weeks. And I believe during the time Brian and I were there, the final score was Rao staff 324, Rao students 14. All right, we've got Mr. Dix here, who's been uh, playing most of lunch recess so far, lunchtime. Okay, you got quite the sweat broken yeah, out here. Yeah. What's going on here in the, uh, in the gym here at Rao during lunchtime today? So normally about maybe five or six times a year, we do a staff for students three on three tournament and the whole idea is that students come down they just line up in the lunchroom and we get three staff members on each side some people give up their prep periods some people do their lunch duty in here and then we just play basketball for the entire half hour we open up the bleachers students come in and we normally get like 100 people 150 people a day participate and it's awesome it's like one of my favorite things to do. okay now be honest are the kids coming close to actually defeating a staff team that we've had one team win this year but every time like those two Alex and Enzo stop on the court I get a little nervous uh, but it's it's a fun way of like playful trash talk and it, it's a way to turn like trash talk into like a love language almost sure. where hey man I got you but at the same time as you're trash talking you're like hey man that was a really nice move and so it teaches that like competitiveness while also like sharing that love with it so I love it it's one of my favorite things like I said and we get a bunch of people who come out the energy in the building after it happens is like everyone's high-fiving each other sometimes someone who's not really considered a basketball player makes a three-pointer sure. and everyone's like hey Billy that was awesome so it's a really positive community event that we do. And I see that the bleachers get packed, so even the non-basketball players are coming in to see what's going on. Yeah, and some of them come to watch their basketball friends, and you get like the uh, contrarian students who come in and root for the teachers and like make signs for the <laughs> teachers. And so they try to hype us up a little yeah. bit. So yeah, it turns into a whole event. We advertise it for weeks in advance in the Shamrock News. We have kids who come around from the Shamrock News and film the event, and we put the highlights up on the news. So it's a really awesome opportunity. Okay, a lot of teachers are giving up their prep time. A lot of teachers working up quite the sweat. Do you go back to class all sweaty? Do you have to keep your distance from students I, I, afterwards? I got some deodorant in the classroom and I got some towels where I can go in and kind of like <laughs> dry myself up. Give me five minutes and I'll be back ready to teach. We so. gotta give you time to towel down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, you know, I sweat a little bit more. I'm, I'm becoming an older man, so I'm not the 22 year old. I'm the 37 year old who's like, my back's gonna be shot after this. Time. All right, and as we talk to you now, you still got another crew coming in in a few more minutes. Yeah. Are you ready to lace them up again and take on another group? Yeah, we're feeling pretty good today. I feel all right. I got a little bit in last night at basketball practice, so we're we're hanging in. My, my all my body works, so we're ready to go. All right, we're gonna be watching closely to see if a row group of students can upset Mr. Dix and the group of teachers. We'll see in just a few minutes. All right, Mr. Newman, the principal of Rao Middle School, you're fresh off the court. Fresh off the court. A little out of breath. How was I, that for you out there? That was a lot of fun. I find myself, I'm, I'm not quite as young as I used to be. Yeah, yeah. Three on three hoops looked a little different at 51 than it did 21. That's what I got, but lots of fun. This is so great. This is a Rao thing, Rao tradition. Thank you, Mr. Dix. All the Shamrock News kids. All the amazing Rao kids. Great community. That's what we do here at Ralph. Now, do you get a chance to go back to your office and towel off a little bit, or how you got to go? No, right man, back you know me. I'm right back in. There are no days off around here. All right, we'll All right, let you go. All right, we'll let you go. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
Well, back here at the Cleveland High Gym where the Kingsmen fall just short at the end. What a great game, though. We're here with Coach Monica McKay. Monica, you got to feel proud about your kids in that one. We are. They played great, really strong defense today. Amazing three-point shooting from Joey. Just all-around good defensive team, and the offense wasn't bad either. Yeah, you were only behind by a basket there at the end. Did you drop that play for Joey to try to yeah, win it there? Yeah, we wanted that three-pointer to come out at the end, but we just couldn't clinch the lead. What can you say about these kids who come out to the gym to practice every day and they come to these games? This is their first time playing an away game. It's got to be quite the experience for them. It is. The team bus experience is amazing. They get to have that bonding moment together. They're meeting up after school. You know, we volunteer our time to do this program for now. Um, it's expanding with the district and it's all about inclusion and anyone that doesn't have an opportunity to play on a regular basketball team, this is for everybody to come join and have fun. It was so much fun watching you along the sidelines too. Your heart's racing during yeah, this game. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I'm competitive, I'm passionate, and I care about these kids. You know, I want them to have a good time. Um, it's definitely not about winning, but there's got to be always that little piece that, you know, wants that W, so. Well, congratulations on a great yeah, game today. Thank we'll you. be back again for sure. Okay. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute! Just as we were about to air this segment on NCSC TV, check out what happened at Milwaukee High School. Milwaukee High School recently earned national recognition from Special Olympics for meeting 10 national standards of excellence in the areas of inclusion, advocacy, and respect. The Mustangs are one of less than 700 high schools nationwide to receive this national banner recognition, and only the 17th in Oregon. Today, Special Olympics Oregon presented the banner during halftime of a recent unified game versus Putnam, and it will now proudly hang in the Milwaukee High Gym. Congratulations to MHS for modeling a school where everybody belongs and for earning such a prestigious award. Well, that'll do it for this fast break edition of NCSD News, where we hope you enjoyed catching up with the Kingsmen. Hats off to Llewellyn and a shout out to the Roush Shamrock Shooters. Along with videographer, the always buzzer beating Brian McGrew, I'm Curtis Long, and we just might be at a school near you soon and show you there are always great things to see wherever you go at NCSD.